there's a huge amount of interest at the moment in organic materials that can emit light and this could be for applications in light emitting diodes or for biological imaging and two of my colleagues here in the School of Chemistry have come up with some materials that have incredible contrast ratios and they're also tunable so the opportunities to use them in things that would be of huge benefit to all of us are possibly just round the corner. Mike Engelson came up with some very interesting chemistry to simply modify conjugated molecules and those molecules we've been using in applications for light emitting diodes or their applications in solar cells, conversion of light into electricity. A lot of smartphones now are using what are called organic light emitting diode displays where we have organic molecules which emit light on the application of electricity. And Mike's got some interesting chemistry that can transform the colour of emission uh, from those molecules from blue to green to red. Most materials used in light emitting diodes are based on expensive rare earth elements such as platinum and iridium. This is just incorporating cheap and plentiful uh, boron to give highly emissive materials. We transform a carbon-hydrogen bond into a carbon-boron bond and by doing this we can fundamentally change the properties of a wide range of organic compounds. Yeah? So you can actually make them to be either useful synthetic intermediates for synthesis or you can actually make them to have desirable properties in their own right that you can then apply in a range of applications. By adding a simple commercial reagent, boron trichloride, to a compound, we do a chemical transformation that changes the energy of the light that it absorbs, i.e. the colour of the light that it absorbs, and the colour of the light that it, it emits. So for example, you, you take a compound that would be a green emissive material, i.e. emitting green light, and by doing very simple transformation, you generate a material that emits red light in the, in the deep red region and even in the near infrared region of the spectrum. One application that we've been looking at with a range of collaborators is in vivo bioimaging. So we've done a transformation that's um, made a, a borelated material that emits in the near infrared region of the spectrum. Human tissue is reasonably transparent in that region of the, of the spectrum. So emissive light travels and penetrates quite far in the body. Our colleagues in biology are very interested in being able to either follow biological molecules as they move through cells or they're circulated within animals and the, the way they do that generally is they add a tag to those compounds which can be used to emit light or radioactivity and if you want to monitor things through tissues you need very efficient emitters in the near infrared. Generating materials that actually emit greater than 700 nanometers, i.e. emit near-infrared light with high brightness. That's really challenging to do, especially in the solid state, and that's one thing this chemistry has enabled. We've been taking the molecules that Mike and Dan have, have made in the laboratories upstairs, and we've been depositing them onto substrates for use in devices, and this is actually a, a field effect transistor, an organic field effect transistor. These systems are particularly attractive because they are purely organic molecules. There are no metals in them, so you don't have to worry about any possible toxicity issues from metals. And also, uh, their very nature uh, it means they're very, very tunable. And this means that you can almost dial up the colour that comes out of these molecules. And that could be hugely useful for if you're going to try and use them in a display or if there's a bioimaging problem, like if you're sick and you go to the doctor and a test is run, it could be that that ability to change the colour would be really important to probing one suspect illness over another. 